Good evening. I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. Good evening from Nigeria. I don't know wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's so nice to be live. If you are watching, let us know where you are watching from. So good to be live. I never knew that uh, <laughs> social media work is full-time work. Yesterday, I had programmed to come on live, but I couldn't due to some technical issues. But thank God we are live. If you are there and you can see me, please indicate where you are watching from. Thank you, Achievers World from Italy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So glad to hear from you. This morning, I went um, to go and give the lecture I had streamed online on managing resources in times of scarcity at Ewu to a cooperative. That was very nice. So I can see five people. Can you indicate where you are watching from and who is watching? Thank you so much. I'm so glad that um, the little we do here is affecting lives globally. And it is this, your appreciation and the messages you send that propels me. Uh, oh, thank you. You've been listening to all the messages since today. That's great. Thank you so much. I have a lot of friends in Italy, particularly those from Edo State. Positive Life CJ from Enugu, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you are on. I want to share this message very quickly. And um, as we do that, please invite others and share with others. Yes, two people just joined us. Tell us where you are watching from. From Abuja, King Tola. Thank you so much, my, my prince, how are you? I told you that when you become king, remember me. Thank you so much. Yes, from Abuja, that's great. Okay. I want to speak on the deposit of God in you. The deposit of God in you. I'll take our, my bearing from Genesis chapter 4, from verse 17b. If you go to my blog, Dr. Apoki's blog, this message is there. I think I wrote it about five or six years back. It was a discussion I had with my son, Ufoma Apoki, as we were going to Calabar or Uyo for a program. He is one of, he is, I, I philosophize a lot with him. And um, we're talking about the deposit of God in us as individuals and why Africa has remained backward despite our vociferous Christianity, despite everything that Bamidele kings from the UK, thank you. Despite all that we do in the body of Christ. In, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 17b, the Bible says, He then built a city and named it after his son Enoch. In the preceding verse, God had cursed Cain, but Cain built a city. Can you imagine that? He built a city. How did he get capital to build a city? How did he get raw materials to build a city? Remember, Cain was cursed that he would wander from place to place. Did he wander? No. He built a city. This one, God personally cursed him. But Cain did not wander. Because when he started doing what God had intended to do, to accommodate humanity, God suspended that curse. The same thing with Ruth. When Ruth said, your God shall be my God, your people shall be my people. Where you die, I will die. Where you are buried, I will be buried. The curse on Moabites that their descendants will not enter the temple until the 10th generation was suspended. 
And Boaz, um, Ruth became the great grandmother of David. That's just four generations. Now, this might be heavy on some Christians who are very, very religious. When your purpose in life strongly aligns with the purpose of God, God suspends some rules. You won't understand, you won't agree. When the king of Moab sacrificed his first son, God, his anger turned against the children of Israel for attacking Moab. Because that king had done what God intended to do by sacrificing his own son. I know there are people who think that they are being psychedelic or knowledgeable by disputing our faith and by being atheists. No matter where you are in the world, if I sat in the same class with you, you will not beat me in exams. No matter where you are in the world, if I sat in the same class with you, you will not beat me in exams. I'm not a Christian because uh, I'm an obscurantist. There's nothing you have read and nothing you have believed that I have not believed before I became a Christian or that I have not known before I became a Christian. I became a Christian by revelation and choice. So don't come to my page and despise and dispute God. I have felt and have experienced God. So Cain built a city. How did he get materials? The question I want to ask, if a man cursed by God could build a city and did not wander and even had a child and named the city after his son, he had posterity in mind, he had legacy in mind. Why are you living a stupid life as a Christian? Why can't you even build a house that you will live in? You are dying as a tenant. I did a video somewhere of a bird that built a nest on my property, my, my, my roof, built a nest on my roof. How did the bird know that it is time for it to lay eggs? How did it know that it has to incubate the eggs? How did it know that it, it needed a nest in another man's real estate? If a bird could build a nest, if ants can build a termitarium, what are you doing as an African or as a black Christian anywhere in the world, in the diaspora, that you are living a wretched life? You see, you are redeemed by Christ and you are no longer under any curse. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. That is, you did not exist a, before you knew Christ, in, this, in the real sense, the day you knew Christ, your old identity faded away. Everything about you, African, Asian, changed. And you became a new creature, a, a, a purposeful creation and creature. So you are, you see, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus. We are God's masterpieces. We are God's work of art. We are God's intelligent creation in Christ Jesus to do good works prepared for us in advance. That is, we are created in Christ Jesus. If you butcher meat in sand, it will taste sand. If you butcher meat inside diesel, it will taste diesel. If you put um, sachet water inside the refrigerator with foul smelling meat, because the container that holds the water is of low molecular weight hydrocarbon, the odor will permeate into the water. When you taste the water, it will taste the odor of the refrigerator. So how come we are created in Christ Jesus? We don't taste like Jesus. We don't exude Jesus. We will come to that. Now, God hated Esau. Esau lost his birthright. Esau lost his blessing. But when Esau came back, the Bible says he told Jacob that I have more than enough. Keep your own. So imagine a man cursed, a man, a man that God hated. What, the, what is the meaning of God hated Esau and loved Jacob? That means God preferred. He preferred Esau. 
the spirit of Esau, I think I wrote a blog on that. The spirit of Esau is the spirit that does not have reserve. It's the spirit that does not practice delayed gratification. It's the spirit of laziness. It's this consumptive spirit. Esau ate everything he hunted every day. And when his father needed meat, he had no reserve. The spirit of Esau is the spirit without reserve. The spirit of Esau is the spirit that is not futuristic. The spirit of Esau is the spirit that does not, that does not take care of itself. The clothes of Esau were in his mother's house, and he was about 40 years old. Esau was the dirty, careless, reckless man. And the Bible says that when he sold his birthright, he just walked away with negligence. And God needed a man with the spirit of Jacob that was agitative, protective, adventurous, creative. And because he knew that Jacob was going to um, leave Israel, was going to live among an aggressive, hostile environment. The population of Israel, I think, is about, or the landmass of Israel, I think is about 0 0.005 of the total landmass of the Middle East, but they have not conquered them. They have excelled. Even from the Yom Kippur War, they have excelled. So God needed such a spirit, a determined spirit, a cautious spirit, and a spirit that defends territory, a spirit that is wise, a spirit that is articulate. So God despised the spirit of Esau. So, but the children of Esau became the first dukes, D-U-K-E-S. They became the first chiefs. They became the first title holders in the descent among the descendants of Abraham. And they even built a kingdom with the capital in Petra. Petra was a very hilly environment. They built a kingdom with the capital as Petra. But that was not the nation that God wanted to use as a model. But that disparity has gone. Let me even tell you this. Do you know Ishmael that was not the chosen child? When Ishmael cried, God heard his cry and opened a well. And Ishmael saw the well with his mother. That well was not there. God dug a fresh well. If the well had been there, people would have gathered around the well. They met nobody, so there was no well there. The well was filled to the brim because they had no rope to fetch water. That was God's creation of a well, materialization. And today I will teach you about materialization and dematerialization. It will shock you, the mysteries of the Bible. And so um, Ishmael, inside Ishmael was Bahrain. Inside Ishmael was Qatar. Inside Ishmael was Dubai. Inside Ishmael was Abu Dhabi. All the nations that we celebrate today were inside Ishmael. And they grew and have prospered and can compete with the nation of Israel. So if these were descendants of Ishmael, as, as some people will call him, why can't we, who are Africans, also excel? There is something we will look at. Now, how come the sins of our grandfathers, we are still blaming ancestral curses? We are still ascribing the poverty of Africa to covenants and curses that our fathers made. Let me ask you a simple question. Germans that killed more than a million Jews, their economy is doing well. Their nation has developed. If it was an African nation that killed Jews, we would have said, oh, it is uh, because we killed Jews. The, the nation of Germany killed Jews. They are doing well economically. They are doing well militarily, even though they can't go to war. They are doing well scientifically. My son lives there. My son is a surgeon there, an orthopedic surgeon there. How come, despite all the gods in India, the Indian economy is doing well? The Indians are occupying major positions in the world, heads of major corporations in the world. 
the Indians are excelling everywhere, including becoming the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, a supposedly Christian nation. And when the man got into office, he offered sacrifices to his gods at number 10 Downing Street. Why has he not died? We need to change our mentality and docility and stupidity as black people. Religion has assassinated our intellect. And preachers who are not schooled, who are not exposed, who make merchandise out of our poverty. You know, let's take Nigeria with 100 and, with 90 million poor people. That's a big market for any person that can harness their fear of poverty and their docility and laziness. So what is happening in Africa is that one man of God comes and hypes on the fears and the laziness and the lack of intellectual development of the average African and tells them it is curses, it is covenants, it is this. And so we, we, we practice escapism and obscurantism. We run away from responsibility. So how come the Indian economy is doing well? How come the Japanese economy is doing well? The Japanese worshipped the sun god. At one time, they worshipped their empire as a descendant of the sun god until Emperor Hirohito said that he was human and that he was not a god. But the Japanese have done so well. Nearly everything we used at one time were from the Japanese until the Asian tigers came up and until people like South Korea came up. So how come the Japanese did well? So let's go back to Cain. Cain built a city. How did Cain build a, build a city? There is an inherent creative ability of God in us, a deposit of God in us that was not affected by the pronouncement on the environment of Adam. God did not curse Adam. He cursed the environment because God cannot curse himself. The deposit of God is in Adam because he was created in his image and likeness. They were like courts of parallel, um, of the same level of jurisdiction. He could not place a curse on himself inside Adam. So he cursed the earth. In pain shall that bring forth children. But the woman was not cursed. It was a process. A process. He said, uh, tons and tissues will grow out of your earth. But Jesus carried that, those tons and tissues on his head. And he shed blood on his head. So the tons and tissues, if we can think with our brains... That those tongues and tissues will not, will not grow in our lands. And so we need to have the mind of God because the creative ability of God is still in us. There is that deposit of God still in us. Man fell short of the glory of God. Man was not emptied of the glory of God. He fell short. Let's assume mathematically God was one million percent godliness. Man came to about 50 units of godliness. He did not empty man. That deposit of God in us is still there. He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. That is, if you even with the redemption, a lot of things change. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. I am seated with Christ in heavenly realms. How can small, small local demons that live on trees that are worshipped, as I was going to go and speak in Egu, I saw where they worship their gods under trees and small, small streams that dry up. How can a god that is worshipped in a stream, a demon that lives in a stream, trouble me that is seated with Christ in heavenly realms? One lazy and lousy Christian will start thinking in his mind now to say, I have not experienced it. Listen and listen well. The families I come from are very idolatrous. Somebody from my household in my maternal side can hold a sword 
and walk through a city, you'll be shooting him, nothing will do him. My grandfather's community, there's still a shrine there. It does not affect me. Witch has not pressed me. The, if witches are that powerful, why do African presidents stay for so many years, um, oppress the people, steal their money, and the witches don't kill them? If African witches were that powerful, if African demons were that powerful, if African native doctors were that powerful, how come we have oppressive regimes and we can't use witchcraft to kill them? Our thought processes need to change. The creative ability is still in us. God gave man ambassadorial responsibility, delegated legislative and delegated administrative ability. He gave us an ambassadorial responsibility. Adam was supposed to represent God before the animals. And so God left him because he had confidence in Adam's ability. The failure of Adam is the failure of himself, not God. That's why he needed to met out that punishment to him, to, to the circumstance, and send him out of the garden. So any failures you are facing, any circumstances you are facing, blame yourself. This message re reverberated in my mind when I called the people I was going to speak to. I said, 10 o'clock is 10 o'clock. Will you be set? He said, by the grace of God. And I told Abraham that was with me. I said, when a Nigerian, when an African says by the grace of God, he has suspended his responsibility. He wants to put the blame on God. The grace of God is resident. The grace of God, there's the saving grace, which is unmerited. But the grace of God is the connection of divinity to humanity to function beyond installed capacity. That is to say, God connects with you and you function beyond your natural capacity or training. I have never been to a Bible school, never. But I lecture in Bible schools. I never studied entrepreneurship, but I was lecturing entrepreneurship in the university without being interviewed. I was lecturing entrepreneurship. It is God's ability. It is his grace. His grace is resident. His grace is not like diesel or gas or petrol that you go when you need it, then he they, they serves into your tank. No, it is there. The deposit of God is resident in you. He said, fan into flame the gift that came upon you when hands were laid upon you. The gift is there. It is you that fans it. He said, let your light so shine. It is you that puts on the switch. It is you that ignites it. It is you that increases the level of luminance. I excel in most things I do because I know that it is my responsibility to excel. God is not going to excel for me. He will prevent me from falling sick. He will prevent me from being accidented. But the responsibility to excel, it has come to a point that even unbelievers, somebody saw me one day and begged me to, to, to stop, and I stopped. You see, the way you speak on radio, do you, do you speak with ordinary hands? Don't you add something? I say it is the Holy Spirit that teaches me. Somebody came to meet me, say, whether well, am I Illuminati, that the way I take a scripture and then read it as if, um, preach on it as if he has never read it before. I say, I am more illuminated than Illuminati because I am illuminated by the Holy Spirit. I said, this passage you, I, I, I preached from, I've read it over and over. I have meditated upon it for months. So the delivery is as a result of preparation and practice. I can't just be lousy and say grace. No, it will lead to disgrace. So you have to take responsibility for your excellence. You have to take responsibility for your finances. Let's stop troubling God with what he expects us to do. That is the problem in Africa. When God created all the animals of the, in the Garden of Eden, he took them to Adam to name. Did Adam study zoology? Where, were, where did he learn the names from? It is the deposit. It was the deposit of God in him that was naming them, that was speaking through him. There is the deposit of God in you. It has not left you. It is still there. 
That's even when you are a sinner, if you want to use the deposit of God in you negatively, you can still produce negative results. There is a deposit in you. It is the deposit of God. If the deposit of God, it is you that either pollutes it, misuses it, or misdirects it. So we'll see people doing well in other aspects of life. We will say they are using uh, the power of the devil. Why, why do you glorify Satan? Why do you glorify Satan? Particularly we black people. Why do we like glorifying Satan? So the ability of God in him, in Adam, God trusted him. And anything he called the animals, imagine naming all the animals. God agreed and accepted. So the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Jesus said, greater is he that is in the, the greater things than this shall he do. That means to say, with our salvation, we are not limited. If we keep if we keep concentrating on the causes and covenants of our forefathers, we cannot confront today. We will be transforming, transferring the responsibility of today to our yesterday. But there are some stupid songs I don't like. These are the days of Elijah. Boy, I am alive. It's not the day of Elijah. It's not the day of Elisha. It's not the day of Moses. It's the day of Dr. Charles uh, Pokey. Elijah could not reach the world as I've reached the world. Elisha has, has not reached the world as I've reached the world. It's not their day. It is my day. It is my time. If it was their day, I didn't need to be born. If God was satisfied with them, I didn't need to be born. It is because God has a duty that I need to perform. That's why I'm born. And until Africans, we are start realizing that we have a duty to perform. We didn't come to this world for entertainment. We are an investment of God and we must produce results. And any person that is not producing results is like the servant that hid whatever it had on the ground. And whatever you have will be taken from you and given to the productive people. That is why we can't mine our oil, we can't mine our gold, we can't mine our silver. Do you know on the crown of the Queen of England, there's a diamond called the Heart of Africa? It was picked from Africa. It was picked from Africa. You might not like Paul Kagame, you might not like his governance, but see the, the, the transformation that has taken place in Rwanda, in Kigali, after a bloody genocide. People are now flocking to Rwanda to want to invest. They are flocking to Rwanda for tourism until an African develops himself. No, I aim in advance. People pay in advance for me to come and speak and deliver lectures. Number one, I, I finished speaking today and then the place erupted. I spoke in my native language and worry English. The place erupted. They didn't want to go. They bought my books in a village. They bought a lot of books in a village. Why? I was teaching them from the results of my life. I'm going to do a, a, a talk. Alu is the currency of life. It is the values you create and share that make people pay you, come to you, recognize you, promote you, advertise you. So I decided that I needed to create value. There, there was enough in me. I always negate what I don't have and concentrate on what I have. Imagine people coming to Kenya to see giraffe. I, I was in the Nairobi park, giraffe, um, 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 rhinoceros, whatever, whatever. It is because they don't have it. So the game reserve in Nairobi or Kalahari or wherever, they attract visitors because they don't have it. People climb Kilimanjaro Mountain because they don't have it. So until we black people start concentrating and developing what we have, no person will respect us. 
That deposit is in us. I always marvel when the Ethiopians, the Kenyans, the East Africans finish running a long distance race, they will still stand. Every other race will be lying on the ground. I always wonder how did they manage to conquer us? Apart from Emperor Menelik, Emperor Menelik in the Battle of Adwa was never conquered. He defeated Italy at the time of war. Menelik was a smart man with his wife Teitu that supported him. So Ethiopia was never colonized. I want to talk about uh, Queen Unzagi of Angola. Queen Unzagi of Angola, during the colonial era, the, the, the Portuguese man went, sent for his brother, but Queen Unzagi went to meet the Portuguese man. And the Portuguese man refused to offer Queen Unzagi a chair. Queen Unzagi told one of his, one of her, her, her warriors to, to bend down and he sat on top of a man and spoke Portuguese. And the Portuguese man was so angry. And then the, his, um, Zagi's brother committed suicide because he was so scared that the Portuguese were coming to defeat them. But Queen Unzagi's father had taught him, taught her how to war, taught her how to be a tactician, a tactician how to speak Portuguese. Queen Unzagi defeated the Portuguese at war. Let us know African history and stop all this rubbish talk. Uh, about causes and covenants that assassinate the intel of, of the African. We're not a backward people. We're a strong people. We have done well before now, and we can still do well again. How were the pyramids built? How was the Sphinx built? How did Benin, how was Benin moat built? If you go around Benin, the moat around Benin, today's budget, it will run into billions of dollars to dig that moat. How was it built? How did the Benin Empire extend from Benin City to uh, Benin Republic of today? How? How did they move? Let's not disparage us. This color is not a, is not a curse. This color is not a problem. It is a protective color because of the rays of the sun in this part of the world. And so it protects us. The melanin protects us from cancer of the skin. And the more you move away from the equator, the lighter your skin becomes. And when people migrated far away from Africa, their skins lightened because of um, the, the poor sun rays. Don't tell, don't tell me rubbish, man. Have you heard of Alexander Pushkin, the poet in Russia, that he came from Africa? That he came from Africa? Curses and covenant rubbish. You see? As long as we keep transferring blames, as we, long as we keep practicing obscurantism and escapism, the average black man will be poor. I was in Otopina Airport to, I went to visit my son and I was coming back, Otopina Airport in Bucharest. And I was discussing with one, I was preaching to one white guy. He said he was going to Spain to sin and I was just preaching to him. Then he asked, he told me, have you heard about, um, have you heard about Charles Darwin? Then I asked him, have you heard of Lamarckism? Have you heard about materialization and dematerialization? We are talking about Charles Darwin, Darwin's theory. How many species have mutated, uh, have evolved to new species? When I talked to him, he said, I've never heard a black man preach like this. And I told him, your skin might be whiter than my skin but my brain is whiter than your own. Boy, the time has come for African Christians to throw away a lot of the garbage we are fed in school, a lot of the garbage we are fed in churches today that make us prisoners of some men of God and hold us to them. The time has come for freedom. The time has come for us to liberate our minds and be ready to be creative. I have children that have schooled in Europe they have done very well, made first class, scored very high grades, excelled in their companies, compete globally with any race. Why is Africa backward? Why are black people backward in their countries, wherever they are? Wherever they are, from Haiti to anywhere. Why? It is because we have not resolved to excel. In the Tower of Babel, God said, since these people are of one speech and one language, there is nothing that is impossible for them to achieve. Wow. One speech, 
one language. One language can be Kikuyu, can be Luo, can be Amharic, can be Hausa, can be Ibibio. That's a language. But one speech is we can make it. We are good enough. We are not inferior. We are not backward. We need to teach our children about people like Jesse Owens. Jesse Owens that won those medals in the Olympics. So, there are men from this race that have excelled because the deposit of God was in them and is in them and they realized it and they did not feel inferior. They did not feel inferior. Let me let you know this. In the United States of America, Nigerian, the average Nigerian family has the highest graduate per family ratio. We are more educated than any race in the United States, including the white people there. So let's, let's start building on this mentality and start disregarding what has held us bound and wasted our time. God said in one, with one speech, I need more men and women like me that can say we are good enough. We are intelligent enough. We are not, ancestral causes are not limiting us. We are limiting ourselves. Even our leaders are not limiting us. We are more than our leaders until the day we are ready to throw away tribalism, acceptance of little, little peanuts to vote paralyzed and incompetent people into leadership. Our nations will not change. It is in our hands. Romania threw away Chasceco. They threw him away. The Russians threw away the Tsars. And then but during the time of Boris Yeltsin, there was a revolt. Black people need to take up their destinies in their hands and stop delegating what they are supposed to do to God. So why did God confuse them in the Tower of Babel? Number one, he, has, he knew that the structure might collapse. Number two, he knew that it will negate the horizontal spread that he wanted to spread around the earth. Number three, if they climbed up and they did not see God because God is his spirit. Those, those things are where, where the initial ones are called ziggurats. If they did not see God, God is his spirit. They will have been confused. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in fruit. So he confused their language. So, but he said there is nothing that is impossible. As long as you can see a man and a woman that will believe that these things are possible, you will achieve it. And I want to spread a message around Africa, around black people in the diaspora. We are good enough. We are not second class Christians. Neither are we second class Muslims. We are first-class citizens of God. We are the origins of species. And God is interested in us to make our mark, to excel. Konji Iwala is the director general of the uh, World Trade Organization. You can't beat her. You can't mess up with her. We should start encouraging productivity. The African has become too used to being an object of entertainment, boxing, kickboxing, um, sports, music, and that. No, we are more than that. We can do well in science. We can do well in technology. The body of the spacecraft that America sends to the moon was designed by a Nigerian. Designed by a Nigerian. I have classmates all over the world that have excelled in different nations. And so let's start re-emphasizing this ability, this deposit in God in us instead of Satan and demons. Now, faith is twofold. One, faith in God, and then faith in the God that is in us. Faith in God and faith in the God that is in me. And that means faith in my ability that God has placed in me. If you don't have that faith, somebody less than you will oppress you. Somebody less than you will intimidate you. People say Dr. Apoki is proud. I'm not a proud man. I just don't take rubbish. I, I refuse to be intimidated by you. 
I refuse to be treated like trash. I refuse to be messed up. You don't try that with me. I went to Springs in South Africa and I met one Indian. He said, uh, are you a Nigerian? I said, yes. Oh, he said, Nigerians criminals. I said, boy, I fought for your independence. I demonstrated for the independence of Zimbabwe, independence of South Africa, independence of Namibia. I demonstrated as a university student. The boy that carried Hector Peterson during the Soweto riot, Louis Umbuisa, I've been asking of him all over the world, I've not seen him, carried Hector Peterson during the Soweto riot. He was in the front of Ebony Magazine. He was brought to my school at Federal Government College, Worry. He was my junior. I schooled with him. Nigeria brought him there on scholarship. And then you, you, are talking to me. I told him, my friend, criminality is intelligence looking for an avenue for manifestation in the midst of oppression and deprivation. And when I went to the church, when they introduced me as a Nigerian, many of them didn't shake me. They hugged themselves. When I finished preaching and the glory of God came down, they were on the floor. When they woke up, they were hugging me. Two Nigerians, they started weeping. And they said they've seen a man that brought pride to their color. And the white South African took my books. He said that, don't preach from these ones on Sunday. I want to preach from them so that they, know, they won't know where. <laughs> they won't know where I got materials from. There's something here, man. There's something. The school, the hospital I worked, I trained. The king of Saudi Arabia used to bring his family there. The secondary school I went to, it was the only secondary school in the world that, brought, that had three students admitted to Princeton University in 1961. Government college really, three students admitted to Princeton University in 1961. And those men have a lot of patents after their names. So who, who, who brought this stupidity into our minds? What kind of religion that you fear demons, you quake over stupid things you are supposed to be controlling? No, 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 it must end. It will end in this generation. We must not feed our children this rubbish. The black man tires mentally too easily. Tires mentally too easily. The black man likes blame, blame colonial masters. Blame imperialists. Blame uh, how Europe underdeveloped Africa. Was Malaysia not colonized? Singapore not colonized? Lee Kuan Yew, they did not talk about the oppression they experienced in the, in the hands of colonialists. Has he, they did not develop his nation to become a first world nation. What of Dubai that we are running to? How many years back Dubai was just a fishing port where people were diving for peers. Go and read the, 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 my vision by the present ruler of Dubai. At 18, he was police commissioner. At 120 something, he was minister for defense. We, 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 we blame people too much. We blame demons. I don't know where that Satan fell into Africa. We blame, blame colonialists. We blame ancestors. It is only we that blame our ancestors in the whole world. We, we blame our neighbors, we blame our old people. In other parts of the world, old people are respected. It is only here we call them witches. Or we blame our children as witches. What is it? Ah, Africans, black men. No, 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 it must change. The black man tires mentally too easily. They are so naive that they expect a perfect state before they do things. They think that by calling on the name of Jesus, everything will just be perfect. Jesus did not promise you a perfect state. He said, in this world, you will face tribulation. The nation of Israel, where Jesus was born and where he did his miracles, is not a perfect state. They are facing tribulations and challenges every day, and they don't solve them by prayer alone. The day of Yom Kippur, when they were praying, that was when they were invaded. But they responded. Golda Meir called Richard Nixon. And Richard Nixon sat on the edge of the presidential bed. And Richard Nixon remembered the, what the mother used to teach him in family devotion. That Richard, one day the future of this, uh, this nation of Israel would depend on you God's people. 
And Richard Nixon remembered the voice of the mother and called uh, Caspar Weinberger, Henry Kissinger, and all that. And there was the massive airlift of materials into the nation of Israel. The greatest airlift that has ever taken place. And the nation of Israel started fighting. And they pursued the different nations, captured the Golan Heights, went into Sinai, crossed the Sinai. They were six miles or 12 miles to Egypt until Nixon called Golda Meir, a woman. Say, will you humiliate Egypt? And they stopped. They thought, and then God supported them. They moved, then God supported them. We can't sit down and be praying. I was telling them in the cooperative, on Sunday you are in church till evening, Monday you are in church, Tuesday you are in church, Wednesday you are in church, Thursday you are in church, Friday you are in church, Saturday you are in church, either for choir practice, Sunday school, or to clean the church. Why don't you employ people to clean the church and let the women go and look for money and then develop their careers? We still, we have the longest services and the least productive people. We fall under anointing, break chairs, and remain the same. Why? When you fall, it is the dogza of God, the weight of God, the glory of God. That's why you say this man is a political heavyweight when he comes with his majestic move and his. So it is the glory of God that, that falls upon you. And when the glory of God falls upon you, it is what is in you that is incubated. If you fall empty, you will stand up empty. So we keep falling and falling in Africa. We are not producing results. And then you come as a man of God. Oh, it was corrosive. I have done that before. I have preached. My interpreter held the microphone. I said, um, um, Christian Pentecostal Mission, College Road. I was preaching College Road in Aba, off Ngwa Road. I was preaching. My interpreter fell under the anointing. Somebody went and picked the microphone, fell. And as I was coming out, they gathered me and said, somebody help me. All of them fell down. I got to the hotel, I asked my son, do you like this? He said yes, and I threw my shirt over him and he fell down. But people fall and fall and fall and remain the same. If plantain falls, it is what is in it that it will grow out if it has to grow. So if you don't have, you fall empty, you stand up empty, and you keep falling with every guest speaker, it won't work. So I got to a point, I had to review it changing, and if they are not changing, what is wrong? And I knew, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Do not let this book of the law depart from your heart. Meditate upon it day and night. You put your mind to walk upon God's word. He said, by wisdom is a house built. By understanding it is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and precious ornaments. Africa will not be changed by prayer alone. Africa will be changed by wisdom. Established by understanding. Filled with beauty through knowledge. Knowledge is different from information. Information is new um, ideas or happenings that come to your mind. Knowledge is applicative information to provide solutions. I gave the key to my office to somebody. He knows, he, he has heard how doors are open. He put the key, he couldn't open it. But I have knowledge, the approach, the technique of opening my door. So when I put the key, I pulled the door to myself and I opened it. That is knowledge. Africans need to understand, need to have wisdom, need to have understanding, and then they need to have knowledge of things administrative procedures, development, administration, and all kinds of stuff. If we don't have it, oh, it won't work. It won't work. Now listen very well. The cars we drive are made by Japanese. Do they speak in tongues? They worship idols. Thomas Edison had several challenges and failures, but he, he, he insisted on getting results. His factory burnt down. But he continued. He failed several times. The African tires too easily. 
So we need to put our minds to work. I wrote here that the miraculous is only an intermittent intervention of divinity in the affairs of humanity when humanity is helpless and confused. Let me say that again. The miraculous, I hope somebody can write that up. The miraculous is only an intermittent intervention of divinity in the affairs of humanity when humanity is helpless and confused. When you are not helpless, God will not help you. God will not brush my teeth for me. God will not flush my toilet. God will not sweep this room. God will not dress my bed. When you are not handicapped, you are not helpless. When you are praying, you are irritating God. The Bible says the prayer of an unrighteous man is an irritant to God. What is unrighteousness? When you don't have a right standing with God. So what your mates as human beings have been able to do, if you are not willing to do it and you don't do it, God will even make your circumstances difficult enough so that the discomfort will make you willing to think and to change. I, 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 I speak the truth. I lie not. Sometimes. Now, listen to this. When God expanded fish and bread in the time of Jesus, did it prevent people from opening bakeries the next day? Would we have started praying? When the Red Sea parted, we don't need the Red Sea to part again. We have built boats. We have built submarines. If it is possible, we can even pass with underground. The English Channel passes on <laughs> the English Channel between France and England. I've not passed there. Passes under the sea. Railway lines are under the ground in England and in several places. The Red Sea does not need to part again because man has thought about how to cross it without bothering God. Assuming you have a child that is always bothering you as an adult, Will you be happy with him? No. That is the problem, the situation Africans are. When you are not helpless, God will not come in. He expects you to represent him. Let's change the emotional Christianity we are practicing. The nation of Israel does not practice their religion the way we are doing. They don't pray every day. They don't shout every day. Africa will not develop from prayer and fasting alone. Africa will not develop. Black people will not develop from singing emotionally and weeping in church. Black people will not develop from anointing oil made by Chinese people and Indians. Somebody came to meet me. He said, uh, I have a vision, a message from God for you. I said, what kind of message? He said, God said you should buy Goya oil, one kind of anointing, uh, olive oil that people used to cook in other countries. I should buy it, and then he will pray for me. I told him, looking at you and me, who needs help? Who does God need to help more? He needs to help you. Tell me you need money, and I will give you money, and I will pray for you and mentor you. He said he needed money, and I gave him money. Oil made by an Indian or a Chinese. Is what you need to pray for. God went to speak to you. He didn't speak to me. Am I, am I such a sinner that God has to bypass me and speak to you? Who needs help more than me? No. You need help. You need mentoring from Dr. Apoke. Don't say I'm a proud man. I know my rights. You don't go and harass an American that knows his rights because you're a policeman. So uh, 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 situations will not change by stickers. Our situations will not change by wearing the necklaces of men of God. Our situation will not change through miracle money. People are talking about miracle money <laughs> in Africa. Can't you see how stupid we are? Our situation will not change by pastors sitting on top of women while preaching or standing on top of people. Our situations will not change by telling people to go and eat grass. Our situations will not change by 40 days fasting, 50 days fasting. Please, eat and think well, reason well. Yeah, most people are using you to make money. All those 50 days fasting is the offering they are interested in. 
Is God so wicked that you need to be hungry for 50 days before, before he answers you? Can you imagine stabbing your children for 50 days? African black man. Can you imagine stabbing your children for 50 days before you feed them? Or before you buy a bicycle, bicycle for them? Or before you pay their... No! We are still practicing idolatry. Where we need to go and please idols, sacrifice human beings to idols before we will get what we are supposed to get. Africans, black people in the diaspora, we love too much music. Now there's a problem in the world. African women have big buttocks and big body. The trend is an emphasis on buttocks and breasts instead of brains. And so you see African young girls on TikTok is shaking buttocks and shaking breasts while their mates are carrying computers, while their mates are doing designing softwares, designing applications. Why their mates are heading institutions in America. Indian girls heading institutions. Indian women heading um, um, formations. American women joining the army, flying planes. While typical African girl, you see, you see her dancing makosa, shaking breasts, shaking, uh, uh, doing puga. Boy, when will Africans leave entertainment and talk about creativity? Africans are still in the mood where a white man will come. This King Charles now will come. Our stupid presidents will bring our women with empty breasts to dance for them. When will we leave that level? Where, when will Africa cease to be objects of entertainment? Cease to be objects of entertainment. Box in the ring for the white man to be the promoter. He makes the money. Fight. Run. I'm not condemning sports, but let's balance this world, the world of the black man. The black man must start to develop his mind, emphasize education, emphasize learning, emphasize solution provision, emphasize value addition. Why must we export only raw materials from Africa? Why must we export? Oh, we carry cocoa. Most of the coffee we carry from, from Martinique, 75% of the coffee they drink in America is originated from the one that was taken from Ethiopia, where coffee was first discovered. Coffee was discovered in the cafe province in Ethiopia. How much is Ethiopia making from coffee? And then a French man took it to Martinique. It's 1.2 million tons of coffee comes from South America to, to America, to the United States. 75% of the, that uh, 1.5 million tons originated from that coffee that came from Martinique, I think in um, 1774. How much does Ethiopia make from coffee? How much does Martinique make from coffee? How much do black nations make from coffee? I've been to Kericho, see tea. How much do the black people in Kericho make from tea? I've been to Mumias, see sugar cane. How much? Indians are there. How much do the Kenyans in Mumias make from sugar cane? I've passed through Lugazi, big sugar cane plantations. Our people keep working as the laborers, while Indians are those who own the factories and control sugar trade, own coffee. On this, we are Indians that we are taking to South Africa, I think in 1802, to go and plant sugar cane as bond labor. They are the ones now controlling economies in Africa, controlling shops all over East Africa. And Africans are acting as storekeepers. In South Africa, they are acting as... Um, with us, when will the black man stand up and control his continent, control his resources, control his life? Slavery has ended long time ago, but we are still bound mentally. And I have come to challenge you today. Let's not 
let this Bible become a bondage to our minds. The, bond, the Bible is a book of freedom. Read it with your mind as an African. Interpret it. Interpret it. We were not excluded from scripture. Simon of Cyrene was a black man. Simon of Cyrene was a black man. The Ethiopian eunuch took Christianity to Ethiopia and evangelized Africa. Ethiopia became the first Christian state in the world. I think it's in 350 AD or 450 AD. There are things we know that we must share with you. Emperor Menelik was a Christian. Emperor Theodore was a Christian. Emperor John in Ethiopia was a Christian. I mean full-fledged Christians. So how come suddenly they gave us the Bible, taught us to close our eyes to pray and also close our brains while they take our resources away, exploit us? Never again. Never again. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But you must know the lie that bound you. God bless you. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles. Uh, Pokey, subscribe to this channel. Please subscribe to this channel. Press the notification button so that anytime I make a post, you will know. And then share this video with as many people as possible. Share it among your communities. Oh, um, Hillary from uh, Sierra Leone. Oh, I enjoyed my stay in Sierra Leone. I was in Freetown, went to McKinney. From McKinney, I went by road to Monrovia. I was shocked that uh, the Firestone factory has Firestone rubber factory, big factory, rubber, rubber, rubber plantation. But we don't produce eraser. We don't produce tubes. We don't produce tires in Liberia. It's sad. It's sad. They use our land, use our resources. In fact, anywhere there is war in Africa, it is because of resources. In the Congo, we don't have handsets, but they take cobalt from Congo. Take our uranium from Niger, use it to go and generate nuclear power, and we live in darkness in Africa. Take our gold, take our californium from Nigeria and kill each other. The black man needs to think there has to be a revolution in our mind and new leadership must have to arise. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoke, and I must go. God bless you.